If you're ready to teach the difference between investigations and experiments, then you are in the right place. I teach fifth grade in Florida, and one of the standards is to differentiate between investigations and experiments. And I do that by using paper airplanes. We start day one by just creating a paper airplane. And this is really an investigation, but I don't necessarily tell the students that up front. We spend about 10 minutes going through folding a paper airplane. Students can make whatever design they want, but they can create a paper airplane. Make sure you have students write their name on the side of the airplane. Then I have students line up all on one side of the room. They turn, they launch their airplane. I say three, two, one, launch. They all stand there and then I say go and they count the tiles, which is our measuring tool and feet <laughs> until they get to their paper airplane. Then they go and they record it on our recording sheet. Notice that I have three throws here because I wanted the students to see that there are still trials in an investigation. And so we line back up, we throw it again for number two and we record that right here. We do that whole process over one more time for throw three. Now at the end, I allow them to take a minute to draw their airplane. Normally that takes most of my first day of investigations. Now at the end of class, I like to talk about what made that an investigation. Well, we asked a question, how far can my airplane travel? We still could make a hypothesis. We don't have to, but we could. We still threw something and we observed or measured the distance that it traveled. We recorded, we still had data, but we did not test anything. We did not change anything. And then I give students a little hint and tell them to go home and learn how to fold more paper airplanes because tomorrow we are going to test them out. So when they show up to school the next day, some of them may have a little bit of a background and have created additional airplanes. Now this one, don't judge my airplane making skills, but they need to create three paper airplanes. Now be sure that you set out paper that's the exact same weight and the same color. This will help prove a point later on when we talk about variables. So don't waste your cardstock on them. <laughs> so as students create their paper airplanes, they can help each other. You can pull up a YouTube video. You could have out little folding directions. Any of those choices are fine. But same thing, students need to write their name and the number that paper airplanes for today. So write their name and then number one. Write their name, number two. Write their name, number three. But today, the recording sheet that you have is a full sheet one. And I start by having the students draw the paper airplane in each of those boxes. And then I tell them it's time to test. Start using some of that vocabulary so that students become familiar that experiments mean to test something. So we do the same thing that we did yesterday. We line up, it takes a lot less time because they already know the routine. We line up on the wall, three, two, one, launch. We launch our airplanes, we stand on the wall waiting for permission. Then when I say count or measure, students go ahead and measure out the amount of feet that it flew and then they'll record that under throw number one. Then I'll say it's time for trial two. They'll line up, repeat. Then they switch their airplane to airplane number two and we do our three trials. We switch to number three, we do our three trials. Often when students get back to their seat, they want to talk about their measurements. So give them an opportunity, ask them a question like which airplane flew the farthest distance? Which one flew the shortest distance? What were the differences between those two airplanes and what caused that difference in the distance? Talk about comparing them with each other. All of that will connect later on when you're teaching the scientific method. Then at the very bottom of this recording sheet, it asks, what's the difference between an investigation and an experiment? And you want students to be able to answer this question by now. An experiment involves testing. It involves asking a question, creating something, or having three different choices, two or three or more choices, and then testing it out, seeing what happens. It's different than an experiment because it's a little bit more complex. You're adding that test part where you want to see which one does something better or does something differently. Then on day three of teaching this, students come into class and we create an investigation and experiment foldable. We spend about the first 10 or 15 minutes of class and we write things down that yes, it can have a hypothesis, but it doesn't have to. 
yes, we are still um, observing or measuring, but we're not comparing results in an investigation. Then we look at experiments. And normally by this point, students can start to tell you what belongs inside this foldable. And so that's really helpful. Experiments includes, can do, can use the scientific method. Experiments need a hypothesis. It has data. You compare results at the end. You're comparing what happened during that test. Then on the same day as this, we create our Venn diagram. So we have a Venn diagram like this. If you have gifted and talented students, this is a great time to say, fill it out. See what you can show me. But I also have some students with um, some disabilities. And so I have some typed up options already. So students will cut these out and then display them inside the Investigations Experiments Venn Diagram. But I do not let students glue until we have seen exactly where everything goes. You know how students are and that they'll say, oh yeah, this goes in investigations. And then later on say, oh, wait a second. I think it has both. So once you have the finished class, go around, compare answers, see that everybody has it correct, and then they can glue them in. Finish up class that day with an exit slip. This is a super simple one that they already did yesterday, but it's a little more formal. What is the difference between an experiment and an investigation? And I tell students there's a lot of lines there because I want a lot of information. This is where they're proving to me that they have mastered the last few days worth of work. They can use the paper airplane as an example, but they need to be really specific. What makes it just an investigation? What makes it just an experiment? I hope you enjoy these tips. Go use them in your classroom and then comment below to let me how they work out for you. See you next time.